Everyone thought that this dinosaur died a few weeks ago. What happened next shocked everyone. The remains seemed like they were only a few weeks old, despite the fact that the dinosaur died over 110 million years ago. Parts of Alberta are libraries of Earth's history, treasure troves of fossils from animals that lived millions of years ago, but sometimes an especially rare gem is found. In March 2011, Sean Funk, a shovel operator at Suncor Energy's Millennium Oils and Mine north of Fort McMurray, Alberta, was digging away at a large bank when he inadvertently stumbled upon Alberta's oldest dinosaur fossil and one of the most well-preserved dinosaur fossils ever found. Right away, we knew it was going to be something good, says Don Henderson, curator of dinosaurs at the Royal Tyrrell Museum of Drumheller, Alberta, but we had no idea how good it was going to be. After getting the fossil back to the museum, Don and his team set to work solving the 110 million year old mystery. The Life and Times of Boreella Pelta Six years after it was found, the mysterious dino was declared a new species to science and given a proper name. Boreella Pelta Mark Michelli. Boreella Pelta means Shield of the North, and its species name is a nod to Mark Mitchell, the Royal Tyrrell Museum technician who spent 7,000 hours fighting for every millimeter while freeing the dinosaur from the rock it was found in. The approximately five and a half meter long specimen was so perfectly preserved that researchers were able to stare into the face of a real dinosaur that lived during a time when North America was a very different place. Borealopelta was built like a tank and covered in thick armor, especially around its neck, indicating that it needed protection from predators. At its shoulders, a massive 51-centimeter-long spike extended out on either side. At first, it was thought these weapons could have been used for fighting other Boreella peltas, but Victoria Arbor, curator of paleontology at the Royal BC Museum, believes they could have been used for both love and war. When you see something like a huge spike, says Arbor, that could simultaneously be a signal to mates that you are in good health. Boreella Pelta's massive shoulder spikes could have acted like a bull's horns or an elephant's tusks, which are used in defense when necessary, but are also an indicator of status and strength. Many of the fossilized armor plates possessed a keratin sheath, the same material as our fingernails, with a thin film that allowed researchers to guess at Boreella Pelta's color. It was found that at least one component of Boreella Pelta's color was this reddish-brown, says Caleb Brown, a curator at the Royal Tyrrell Museum. The pigment seemed to be concentrated on the back of the animal and not the belly, and this is consistent with this idea of countershading. Countershading allows animals to blend with their environment and hide from keen-eyed predators. Although some researchers question whether the coloration was just an anomaly of fossilization, if Boreella pelta, an almost 1,300 kilogram animal, did require camouflage, it must have had some terrifying predators indeed. The terrifying dinosaur of the day, 110 million years ago, was Acrocanthosaurus, a killing machine that ruled the Cretaceous long before well-known predators like T. rex arrived on the scene. Could an attack from an Ancrocanthosaurus have been the cause of Boreopalta's death? In a simulated test, researchers found that Acrocanthosaurus's bite would have done some serious damage to Boreella pelta, and it was likely one of its main predators. But this particular specimen was found in such pristine condition with no signs of trauma that it must have died another way. Dino's last meal may be the key to its mysterious death. After studying the location the fossil was found, the team determined that Boreella pelta likely came to rest belly up at the bottom of a prehistoric sea. In an extremely rare find, the stomach contents of Boreella pelta were preserved along with its body, providing an important clue as to how it got there. Boreella pelta is preserved in incredible detail. If Boreella pelta drowned in a torrent that swept it away, how did it come to rest upside down on the sea floor? Henderson and Brown went back to the records to see the position in which other armored dinosaur and fossils in Alberta were found and discovered that about 70% of these dinosaurs were also found on their backs. 
As Borella pelta started to rot, Brown reasons gases built up within the body cavity. In the water, the rest was simply physics. That bloated body with the soft belly and dense back causes it to flip over, says Henderson. Its arms and legs would have been sticking up in the air. With its stiff limbs acting as sails, Borella pelta would have caught the wind and literally sailed out to sea, traveling a long way into open water. Then, says Henderson, it goes pop, and it goes down like a stone. Borella pelta would have hit the sea floor with force, burying itself in sediment that was disturbed from the impact, key to the fossil's incredible preservation. Through a chemical reaction, this sediment would have formed a natural concrete, preserving the body within its own sarcophagus. Henderson and Brown suspect this is how Borella pelta was protected from immense pressure and decay. Safe within its natural time capsule, the notosaur waited 110 million years until one fateful day when a miner in Alberta came across a miraculous find, and Borella pelta's mysteries were unearthed. But the dinosaur in Germany was rather small, and the sum of the Borealis pelta remains were missing. The hadrosaur, being unearthed in Canada, may be the largest and most complete. Pickles said the team expects to have carved out a block containing the skeleton from the hill by the end of next summer. Then it will be transported to a lab where a team will use finer tools to surface the animal before it's ultimately displayed at the Royal Tyrrell Dinosaur Museum.